It's very it's good. It's the chill room. The chill room. It's be good for you. I think I see and me. It. Yeah. It's. <laughs> yeah. Mike, I see some twister over there. I don't know if you're. Oh, okay. What do you? I, you know, I got a bad knee. I can't do twister. Seafood bisque here at the Marietta Fish Market. Rini finishes rather quickly. Yeah, I'm done. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like it. No. It's good. This place is pretty cool. Uh, Rini, what do we get here tonight? Filming me again, Mike. What do uh, we get? I have a seafood pot pie. Nice. It's all kinds of stuff in it. We'll see. Oh, okay. It's hot. All right, there we go. And I got the boiled seafood combo. Here at the Marietta Fish Market. In Atlanta this week, and we had a chance to go to the Shepherd Center, which is a rehab facility for people with serious injuries. And Rini, I know this is close to you, one of your colleagues and members of the Orlando Police Department, where you work throughout the week, uh, was unfortunately shot. And uh, he's in the facility right now, rehabbing. You and I had a chance to go visit him and his wife today. Yeah, about three months ago, Officer Kevin Valencia was shot in the head responding to a domestic violence call. Um, we had the privilege today to visit Kevin uh, and his wife, Megan. Kevin and Megan have a 10-month-old and a five-year-old, and Kevin's fighting every day as hard as he can to get better, uh, but it's been a tough toll on the family, obviously, and they could really use your prayers and your support. So. Any, anything you can do to support this family, please do so. There's a GoFundMe page that is set up, and you can see the link and the address at the bottom of the screen. And like Rini said, anything that you may be able to do to help out and support this family throughout this tough time and this horrible situation would be greatly appreciated. On and Off the Mic is sponsored by First State Orthopedics, keeping you moving with state-of-the-art techniques. Learn more at firststateortho.com. Outside of Atlanta this week for coffee action. Independent Grounds Cafe. Rudy, five stars, 5.0 on Google. Does Let's anybody go ever get that? There were 60 reviews too, because sometimes you get like three at 5.0. Let's go 60. in so you can annoy the owner. Let's do it. <laughs> the majority of our employees are adults with special needs. So uh, we employ uh, several members of the community that have all sorts of different special needs, but they are our regular employees, they serve coffee this well, and we hope that they are inspired to hire other employees that are like them. That's great. That is so great. Well, how long have you been here? Six months. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. This is so brand new. What do you recommend now? Do you have anything that people specifically come for, or just your just great coffee? Well, we have great coffee. Okay. For sure, everybody's in the pumpkin spice. Oh, oh yeah, it's starting to get Sold to October. A, that's what I'm getting—a pumpkin spice. Okay. But I also have some zucchini chocolate chip muffins that you would. Michael wow. eat those. I mean, you, it, zucchini is a vegetable. Yeah. Right. It's so, a good for you. Yeah, it's it good. It's good. It's all good. Chocolate all right, so now we're expanding. Now we're gonna get like pastries. <laughs> We're gonna have to. <laughs> this is good. But in all seriousness, the zucchini is more healthy for you. It's really just the chocolate chips. And so one of the things I've been eating is zucchini pasta. It's a really good alternative. I used to get zucchini bread every week back yeah. in the day. We were still with radio, one of our uh, great fans. Mary Marinelli, I remember her. She always make me a zucchini bread uh, once a year. I'm gonna tell you though, on these coffee stops, if we keep doing this, we'll be in trouble. Yeah. So this is Jake. Hey, Jake. He is in college now and works here part time. Awesome. And, yes. Uh, I have Jake around. Where do you go to school, awesome. Jake? I go to Chad Tech and I'm currently working towards a diploma in automotive technology. Awesome, awesome, buddy. My family likes sports. We watch football. There you go. We're big fans of the New Orleans thing. Nice. Okay. Drew Brees. Who that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, you. Great meeting you, man. That's awesome. Your son works here and he's he in, in the morning. His name is Drew and he is the morning cashier. He's more confident about life. So when he first started, all he wanted to be was the cashier. But he can make drinks. He can be the barista too. Wow. He just doesn't always want you to know how much he knows. That's cool. <laughs> that's, that's special what you guys are doing here. Keep it up and all the best. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank really appreciate it. Glad we were able to come by. Thank awesome. you. Independent Grounds. This was a great coffee stop and it was it's very smooth and it's not strong pumpkin spice don't do a ton. this is a hazelnut that time I think of the year it was great thumbs up for us independent grounds in Kennesaw Georgia stumbled upon a great spot here
This is Dr. Michael Axe at First Day Orthopedics. The insight is about walking onto a field for an injured player. As I walk briskly onto the field following the athletic training staff, I'm thinking, did I see or hear the injury happen? Is the transport cart ready? Is the ambulance still there? Are my two reserve players directly across from me on the sidelines if the medical staff needs them? Then I watch or sometimes do the exam with only one focus. Is it safe for the athlete to walk off the field by themselves or will they need help? Do I send for the cart or the ambulance if the neck or back injury? Except for the neck and back injuries, I do the complete exam on the sidelines. This is Dr. Michael Wax with today's Team Physician Insight on the Injured Players Transport, brought to you by First State Orthopedics, a team of top docs taking care of Delaware from the beach to the bridge and beyond. Franklin, my dear. Okay, it's the uh, Gone with the Wind Museum here in Marietta, Georgia, 1939. American epic romance film. Right here in town. You look, you look like a movie star, Mike. Yeah, how about you? You could do it. I'm not, not so much. No? Fans would step back in time. They relive this collection of memorabilia, costume pieces, and much more here in the Gone with the Wind Museum in Marietta. Play fake. Rosman to the end zone. Yeah, a little bit too tall there for the receiver. KD Alford. Broken up. Five coverage from Quentin Newsom, who already has an interception here tonight. Yeah, blanket coverage from number one, Quentin Newsom. You said it had the interception earlier that stopped the drive and just excellent coverage. Now, Newsom can play safety, he can play corner. You saw him hook him with the right arm a little bit. Not enough for the back judge to throw a flag there. That's good coverage by one Quentin Newsom. He's talking about overtime rules. That is, you don't do that, Tim. <laughs> is that what he's doing? Yeah, he's like, average. Game, though. Make sure. It is a good game. It's a okay. great game. Tied at 21 in Georgia. This is a good game. This is good. Yeah. No. Crowds into it. Hey, but how, what, a, what a difference it made when Kirksey came back in the game. Yeah, yeah. And I want to come back and I want to say about, like, with uh, Hirschfield and Bruner, yeah. the job that they've done, the like, yeah, I don't deal know if they ID'd ID ID Hirschfield. we got to find out. There he goes. He went. This guy sat here 27 minutes. See how quick I go? You come yeah. and you go. Boom. <laughs> Hope he's not going to Chipotle. Jesus Christ.